Come on, Stella. Come on. Oh. All right, she's getting big, Liddy. Oh my goodness. I can't tell if it's just winter, like she's trying to like put on white fluff up, or if it's just babies. <laughs> right, Stella. It's okay. It's okay. Good girl. Oh, you can feel it filling up. What the heck? She's got Luna's long teeth. <laughs> yeah, I think she's going to be a good little milker. Stella officially has one month left, so we're pretty excited to start counting down the days to little Stella and Zorro babies. Stella is due January 5th. We saw in the ultrasound that Stella has three to four babies in her but sometimes they resorb the babies and it's not what you think. So ultrasounds, while great, aren't always 100%, even when I've had vet techs come out and ultrasound. It's too late to do additional ultrasounds on these goats because the babies are too squished in there. It's too hard to figure out which leg goes to which goat and be able to distinguish between the different ones. You really can only do an ultrasound really early in the pregnancy and then after that, you just have to wait. Not all goats develop an udder before they deliver. Some wait right up until the day that they deliver and then their udder fills up. So it's not really concerning that Stella has a tiny udder. It's not gonna be big until right before she delivers. And that's a really good sign that she is going to deliver. You stand right here and I'm just gonna do the CD, this, the little vaccination and then I'll explain. <laughs> okay. I'll explain it. I'm not gonna give it to you. Don't worry. So a month before the goats deliver, I like to do a couple things. I'm always trimming their hooves, so I'm making sure that that's good. But a month before, I give their CD and T vaccination. The one that I use goes in the muscle. I feel like that one works a lot better and prevents them developing like a sore from it. I give it one month before they deliver so that the babies have some immunity when they're born. CD and T is the only vaccination I give. It's the one that protects against tetanus and enterotoxemia, which are two different diseases that they can get and can actually kill them. So I make sure to give that before they deliver. Then I'll give boosters to the babies. And then after that, it's just every spring. And then I also give them monthly throughout their pregnancy selenium paste. So this is just another month on the schedule that we're gonna give them the selenium paste and I'll give them one more dose a couple weeks before they deliver just to be sure that there aren't any selenium deficiencies. If you guys remember when Tilly delivered Hope and Fern, she had a selenium deficiency and that is why Hope struggled to walk and I'm thinking that that's why Tilly rejected her. So. If I had been a little bit better about being on top of giving her the selenium paste every month, I probably could have prevented that. So after that bad experience, I've learned to never miss a month during the pregnancy so that you make sure to not have any selenium issues. Now, try not to <laughs> be so loud all the time. Oh, oh, I know Ron's right there. Ron's in the way, Ronald. no. Oh. There you go. Go eat some more food. Tilly. Come up here, you're next. You haven't got on the stand for so long. Come on, Tilly. Come on, Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> they make like a wall. Tilly has two, but maybe three. We're just kind of gonna wait and see. Tilly is due February 5th. I don't know, Lydia. I think that Arlena was right. I think she does just have two. What? Well, I mean, sometimes I look at her and she's really big, and then sometimes I'm like, no, she's not that big. Yeah. I wish she'd have three, but I don't know. I think two is just going to be Tilly's style. There you go. Bitch, it's Nummy. <laughs> she does not look like she looks it. All right, bye, Tilly. Come on, Tilly. Try to make it past the piggies. <laughs> There's Luna. The sweet potatoes have been curing for a few weeks under a tarp outside. I haven't washed them yet, they've just been sitting there, and now they're ready to eat. They don't look too appetizing right now, but they'll look a lot better, trust me. When they're curing, you don't want to remove the dirt at all because we want the outside to get nice and tough. So I've got to scrub these potatoes first, and then I'll poke them with a fork, cover them with a bunch of olive oil, and bake them. One of these days, I'm gonna build a cool outdoor oven, but for now I just have a little toaster oven on the back porch, which will do just fine. And while those are cooking, Kevin and I are going to pick the last of the sweet potatoes and get a second round of them curing. 
Look at all these sweet potatoes. Whoa. Oh, that's a huge one. You stabbed it right in the heart. Sweet potatoes are a hot weather plant, so they're gonna grow mostly in the summer. We planted these all the way back in June. They really do take about a good six months. The cool thing is the leaves are edible, and then obviously the root, the actual potato, is edible too. And it's pretty impervious to bugs and things, so I've always loved growing sweet potatoes here in Arizona. It really is so easy. And after we harvest, the goats love to eat up all the leftover leaves. Our version of making snowballs. Look, they're all waiting. <laughs> all right, you guys ready? Now I want you to share. No fighting. Look, here comes Tilly. She's like running over here. <laughs> That's okay, there's plenty. You guys don't have to eat so fast. Yum, yum, yum. All right, we've got our three pumpkins, Kevin, and we've got our sweet potatoes that are curing and a bunch to eat, so. All right. There you go. Uh, more pumpkin pie sound good? And sweet potato pie. Yeah. All three kitties are with us. One, two, three. And they're special breed guardian, or no, garden cats. Garden cats, yes. All right, ready, go. Okay guys, we're gonna do an experiment. We've noticed that the goats have been making trails across the pasture, so we're gonna take the drone up and we're gonna see which one is the culprit. And Lydia is here. <laughs> the boys are out there trying to round up all the goats and get them to follow their paths across the yard, so hopefully they can do it. Oh my gosh, Lydia. Look <laughs> how many paths that they oh have made. Oh my word! Oh my gosh. Okay, let me move high, a little bit higher, a little bit more forward. Are we going to be able to tell which goat is which? Yeah, come on. Like I can tell that that's like either Luna or Stella. That's Luna. Look at all these paths they've made. That's Tatum. <laughs> Tatum is... <gasps> look, they do! They follow well. Tilly goes on that path. Tilly goes on the path. And they go on that one. Oh, look at on Luna's on that little one. And Fern. Oh, there's yeah. Winnie in the in behind, behind. Look at that's that one main path in the middle. They yeah. keep following. Look, <laughs> that is so funny. All right, we're gonna go a little bit closer so we can see him. He's gonna go back. He's gonna run now. If you run, then they won't. <laughs> they don't go on the paths when he runs. Go up to Hermione. You should go up to Hermione. I could get really, really close, and she wouldn't care. She's like, what? Oh, she sees it. She sees Hi. it. She's like, what? Goats are so afraid of this thing. It's so funny. Let's see how close I can get until they start running. It's new and it's loud, so it's scary. Oh, Stella's already like, nah. Oh, <laughs> Tatum's gonna push with Fiona out of the way. <laughs> They're still not really... Oh, there they oh, go. Got a little too close. Except Winnie. Winnie's just sitting out there. Winnie's pretty brave. No, oh, there she goes. No oh, power behind Winnie. Sorry. Sorry for stressing you out. There they go. They come back out now, the second. Uh. You see him on the paths? <laughs> yeah. All right, the verdict is that all of them are to blame, but Tilly the most. <laughs> Where did Ethan go? Did he just go inside randomly? Yeah, he just, he just left. Never mind. <laughs> The sweet potatoes have been slowly roasting for a few hours, and so we're gonna finish pulling together this dinner. I'm gonna try to use as many things I can from the garden. First, I'm gonna make a salad out of this Paris lettuce, cilantro, and just one red pepper. When it comes to a salad from the garden, it's there's no recipe. <laughs> You're just throwing together whatever you think will go good together, and most of the time it works out. The best thing would be is if I could show you guys my fresh catfish from the pond, but I still think I need to wait before we can catch and eat them. So 
Tonight, I'm just using some cod from the store. I breaded them and I'm gonna lightly pan fry them to kind of complete this backyard dinner dish. The sweet potatoes are perfect. My great grandma Alva always said, you've gotta slow roast sweet potatoes until they get nice and caramelized. And I think we cooked them perfectly, even if it was in my dinky little toaster oven. I'm gonna keep things really simple. I'm gonna mash them up, add some butter and salt and pepper. That's it. And guys, these were so good. I, it's still so exciting to me to grow stuff from my backyard. I don't think I'll ever get to the stage where I can grow everything that we ever eat from our backyard, but it's still really fun to pull things from the garden and make dinner. So that's it. Pretty simple dinner, but definitely delicious. Well, I just wanted to give you guys an update on our solar panels that we use to uh, power our farm, our pond and everything. It's now about six months later. They're still working, producing lots of power here in the winter time. In Arizona, we have lots of sun. The winter time is good because we don't have as much load like uh, our air conditioner and everything. So uh, all the power we produce, we can, we can bank it. Our friend Brian was the one that did our solar and he did a great job and we'll again put his link down below if anyone is interested in doing solar. It's a great option. Willow, you kind of in heat or something? She was just talking a second ago. Come on, Willow. She's doing it a little bit. I can hear her. If you listen really closely, you can hear Willow making buck sounds, which I've never had happen before. So apparently, does make buck sounds. Are you making little buck sounds? She plays hard to get. She's yeah, not, she does. She's not one to really show them. Likes her. The plan is to breed Willow with Zorro over here, but not until May or June. <laughs> <laughs> she's just gonna stand there like. Zorro's like, she's mine. They're gonna be such a good pair. They're the one I'm most excited about. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you wanna see the video where Stella and Zorro and Tilly and Winston all had their first dates, click right here.